Arrowhead isn't the only place to spot a Kansas City Chiefs player. Check out how students at several Shawnee Mission schools had a close encounter. Also, find out what had students at Tomahawk stepping out with the superintendent. Plus, a lord representing the Queen of England visits Shawnee Mission West to deliver a record-setting honor. And Shawnee Mission East debaters show the shadow how it's done. All on this episode of Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. Welcome to Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. I'm your host, Leanne Neal. Plenty of Shawnee Mission students have been seeing red and loving every minute of it. That's because they've been welcoming some very special guests. The spirit shown by students and staff at Apache Elementary impressed the Kansas City Chiefs so much that the team named Apache as one of its Red Friday Spirit Schools. To celebrate the achievement, the Chiefs sent offensive lineman Ryan Lilja to the school. Lilja, a Shawnee Mission graduate, had an important message for students who were sitting where he was not so long ago. Now I'm back here uh, playing for the hometown Chiefs and uh, it's a dream come true. I'm, uh, I'm really, uh, I'm living a dream you guys and um, I, I wanted to tell you guys that um, if you work hard enough and you want something bad enough and you dedicate yourself to it, dream, dreams come true and I'm, I'm a perfect example of that. So dream big, you guys. Next, Lilja took questions from students. The first one, how many touchdowns has he scored? <laughs> I do, actually, because I've never scored one. Um, I, play, <laughs> I play offensive line, so I block for the guys that uh, score touchdowns. Sometimes it's a thankless job uh, because you don't get in the end zone, but when, uh, when you're running back or you're wide receiver, uh, scores a touchdown, you feel like you're part of it. For being such a spirited school and winning the Red Friday Spirit Award, Apache is now up for the $10,000 Red Spirit Grand Prize. The winner will be announced later in the football season. At Indian Hills, middle school students got a real kick out of their special visitors. Hey, you guys ready to have fun? Yeah. All right, I'm looking out there and I think that we've got at least 10 pretty good kickers. I think we might have more. Actually, all you guys might be really good. Who knows? Chiefs place kicker Ryan Suckup and long snapper Thomas Gafford stop by to help students with their punt, pass, and kick competition. There you go! At this session, the focus was on kicking off of a tee. Everyone had two chances to do their best, and it probably didn't hurt to have the ball teed up for you by an NFL pro. Yeah, well, you were good! About. You're good. No. You got a hidden talent you never knew you had. Students who were Chiefs fans appreciated the visit. It's really cool because like they're like Chiefs players and they're on TV and all the time and it's really really cool. All right. Even those who didn't necessarily follow the Chiefs enjoyed the day. I think it's just fun like a lot of kids like doing sports so it's kind of fun to like see how far you can kick it and throw it. So many kids do stay inside and um, don't get to be outdoors and, and just something different for them to test. They really like, again, this age group really enjoys trying to uh, line themselves up against somebody else and see who can outperform the other. So it's just a lot of fun. A lot of kids were kicking the ball as far as they could and, and having a blast doing it. So we were just kind of there to encourage them and coach them and try to help them if we, in any way that we could. For Gaffer, visiting schools is a great chance to pay it forward. You know, I remember I was a kid growing up in Houston. I was a huge Oilers fan, and I got to meet Warren Moon one time. And I just remember that excitement and that, that just joy that I got to meet Warren Moon. Uh, and he gave us this, uh, it was like a dare um, speech. And I remember Warren Moon doesn't do drugs. I'm not doing drugs, you know, that kind of thing. And so uh, I just kind of want to, you know, have that same thing, you know, back to, back to the community now. One girl and one boy from Indian Hills will advance to regional competition where they'll have a shot at making it to the finals at Arrowhead. Every year, Indian Hills has taken part in punt, pass, and kick. A student from the school has made it to Arrowhead. At Blue Jacket Flint Elementary, students are getting fit with the help of a pretty well-known personal trainer. Y'all ready to have some fun? Yeah! All right, we're gonna work hard. I'll put you out through a real boot camp. A real, a real, real boot camp. 
Kimball Anders, a former fullback for the Kansas City Chiefs, visited the school to lead students in a football-style workout. First, Anders showed the members of Blue Jacket Flint's Iron Kids Club how to do each of the drills he used to do as a professional athlete. Let's go. Then it was time for the students to try them out with some encouragement from the three-time pro bowler. Uh-oh, four go to one, good job. The students seem to get the message. Uh, exercise is important because you don't want to be known as that one unhealthy kid that just sits around and plays video games. You want to be known as that kid that's up there and moving. It. In addition to exercise, Anders told the students that another priority for him is education. Your education is the most valuable thing that you can have. You know why? They can cut you from football. You can get hurt in football, right? Guess what? They can't take away your education. They can't take away your degree. This is the first year for the Iron Kids Club, which is the brainchild of Blue Jacket Flint teacher Lindsay Birch. I came up with the idea for Iron Kids when I was riding my bike. I was training for an iron, a half Ironman triathlon this year, and so I thought of the idea while I was doing a, a running and biking workout. Athletics is just one component of Birch's Iron Kids idea. The club's three goals are to encourage students to be more active, to read more, and to take part in community service. For this day, the focus was on exercise, and after a vigorous workout, there was time for a quick group shot before Anders taught them how to wrap it up like the pros. One, two, three. Mission North students are making great strides in math. The secret to their success? When Spotlight on Shawnee Mission returns. Hi, my name is McKinley Cowan, and I'm a fifth grader at Marion Park Elementary School. My book is Chansey, written by Gigi Armato. It's about a horse named Chansey and her young rider named Claire. Chansey is a depressed and lonesome horse and neglected by his owner and feels he will never love again until one of the young riders from the school named Claire takes interest in him. There are a series of events including a competition, Claire's injury, and Chansey's cancer leading the blindness, Chansey soon finds his true heart and home with Claire. All right, this book, five out of five stars, because it shows a, a true relationship between a girl and her horse. If you like adventure, read it. Welcome back. Educators at Shawnee Mission North are on to something when it comes to helping students who struggle to make the grade on the math portion of the Kansas assessment test. Check out how they're turning many of these students' mathematic challenges into successes. I think it's going fantastically well. The kids are go in not really feeling very comfortable with math, not feeling comfortable with themselves being able to do this, and it's surprising on how well they do afterwards. Something exciting is happening in the math department at Shawnee Mission North. Its students have made significant gains in performance on the Kansas math assessment tests. One reason could be an innovative class called Math Enhancement that targets those students who struggled with math. First of all, the curriculum for the class is designed to get the student ready to take the state test. So we're able to focus in on, on those particular skills that the student may be lacking. Shawnee Mission North's approach uses data from the students to help drive the lessons and identify problem areas. So when you can get that data to the, the teachers and when you can show that data to the specific student and say, this is what we need to work on and this is how we're going to accomplish that, um, and this is what you've already accomplished, those are powerful tools. We can spot the problems a lot easier. They're not able to hide, you know, and kind of fall back into the crowd by not answering questions. For some students, getting comfortable with the test itself may be as much a key to their success as the mathematics involved. I was most likely test anxiety, but there were some things I didn't know and I felt like I learned through math enhancement. They come in with the attitude, I have never been successful with this why am I going to continue to beat my head up against the wall? And you have to get them past that point. 
and that's probably the biggest challenge that we have. Yes, you can do it. Here, let me help you to do this. For these educators, the greatest reward comes when their students retake the math assessment. They're invested in it, and when you give them back their scores, and you get to tell them that, you know, not only did you pass the test, but you did so much better than the last time. I mean, it's just, you can see that they're excited about it. For many of these students, mathematics success breeds success. They come back and they've had better success in their other classes. They'll come back and say, oh, I saw that and I knew how to do that this time. All kids can learn is giving them the opportunity to learn with what their skills currently are and taking them that step further. Something's afoot at Tomahawk Elementary. Actually, it's more like hundreds of feet hitting the street. Annie tells us why. Today is International Walk to School Day, and what we do is we have about three or four meeting places, and we all walk together as a group. After gathering for the walk, students took a quick group shot before starting off. Each was equipped with a flag from another country to help celebrate the worldwide walking event. Spearheading the school's involvement in this feat for the feet was Tomahawk's HIP team. HIP stands for Healthy Planet or Healthy Person. The I is I contribute to the Healthy Planet and Healthy Person. It consists of about 40 kids now. We've grown quite a bit. We're into composting our lunch waste and our breakfast waste. We've cut our trash at Tomahawk by reduction and uh, composting and recycling to about 92 percent in one year. So we're Pretty excited about that. As students put their best foot forward, they knew they were making a difference. For the planet, it's good to walk because it's saving gas and it is a good chance to spend some time outside before it gets really, really hot or really, really cold. <laughs> uh, it's important because you want to like get in shape for stuff and you really just want to walk with your friends and talk and you want to see like who will come like today we have the superintendent Gene Johnson here. Indeed, Dr. Johnson joined the Tomahawk Walkers for this special event. But for these students and parents, International Walk to School Day is just part of a bigger game plan. Every first Friday of the month we meet at these different corners, wear a different color, sample different fruits and vegetables of that color. When the students arrive at school, they get to sign a poster to signify their achievement. Students say the walk is worth it. Because we get to walk outside and talk to our friends and just have fun. Students from 13 Shawnee Mission schools join students from more than 40 countries around the world for international walk to school events. Some Shawnee Mission West students are preparing for a trip across the pond up next, find out how it will set a world record. Welcome back. A sold out celebration for the Shawnee Mission Education Foundation brings some extra support for students and educators. More than 700 business partners and community patrons attended the foundation's annual breakfast. This year's event, entitled Powering Dreams Through Education, raised more than $112,000 to fund scholarships and grants for district students and staff. The centerpiece of the morning was Superintendent Jean Johnson's State of the District Address. His report celebrated the educational opportunities, academic achievements, and honors taking place across the district. To watch the Superintendent's State of the District presentation, visit www.smsd.org and click the Watch SMTV button on the right side. Then scroll to the bottom and click on Other Productions, then click on 2010 State of the District.
Shawnee Mission West recently rolled out the red carpet for a couple of distinguished guests from across the pond with a very special message to deliver. The Lord of Tenancy of Greater London, City of Westminster, and the Lord Mayor's Association take great pleasure in extending an invitation to Shawnee Mission West High School Band and Jazz Band who participate in the 26th annual New Year's Day Parade and Festival to be held in London, England. Is it accepted? Yeah. With that, Shawnee Mission West's Viking Marching Band set a world record, becoming the first group to be invited to perform in London's New Year's Day Parade for the seventh time. You will be, of course, kids, you will be the ambassadors of your school, of your state, of the nation, in fact, and uh, it is an important job, and you have shown you can do it magnificently. I don't think they quite get it yet. I really don't think they understand. I mean, as much as I talk about it and try to explain, you know, this is a liaison from the Queen that's coming to you, and they're like, wow. In order to give the students an opportunity to raise funds for the trip, the invitation is for the 2012 celebration. But seniors who were part of appearance number six say for the underclassmen, it will be worth the wait. It's a great experience. You get to see all the famous landmarks. You go on great tours. You learn so much about the country and its amazing history. The parade, we went to our parade site and got in line with hundreds of other people and you know so many different high school bands. It was amazing. And we got on our parade route and we just marched and we kept marching and kept marching. And it was just one of the most awesome experiences of my life. The parade's executive director thought the group might like to know that the route they marched would be the exact opposite of what was done before. Which means, I'm told by band directors, that it has one huge advantage from their point of view, and that is that the route is now downhill all the way. Organizers expect more than 575,000 spectators to line the streets of London to watch the parade. Another 240 million will watch on TV worldwide. So what does a group like Shawnee Mission West bring to the mix? No place else in the, in the world has bands like America does. And so when we come over and we have the, the dance teamers with flags and pom-poms and, and all the color and vibrancy that a marching band presents, they're just amazed and, and eat that up. They love it. In addition to breaking the appearance record, the Shawnee Mission West band members will also gain the title of Cultural Olympian because London is hosting the 2012 Olympics and the New Year's Day Parade has been named the country's first Cultural Olympic event. There's no debate that being a successful debater involves hard work. Coming up, The Shadow checks out what it takes to be part of Shawnee Mission East's debate team. Hi, I'm Lily Wolfmeyer, and I read the book, The Boy Who Dared, by Susan Campbell Bartoletti. This book is based on a true story about a boy named Helmuth Hubner, who lived in Germany during World War II and was raised to be a Nazi even though he didn't want to be one. One night, he went against German law and listened to a radio station that was not Nazi approved and learned that what the Nazis had been telling the German citizens about the war was all lies. He then risked his life by writing pamphlets and s that told the truth and secretly dispensing them through the city. I loved this book and thought it was truly outstanding. I learned that not all Germans supported Hitler and his goals and were persecuted like the Jews at this time. I rate this book five out of five stars, though it might be scary for younger readers. Welcome back. Here's a tough question. Should the U.S. reduce its military or police presence in foreign nations? The Shadow discovered that's the topic this fall for debate students across the country, including those at Shawnee Mission East. I 
I think it was your third point on advantage one. It said, um, somewhere in the card it said that permanent presence can't solve. Oh yeah, no, it's unnecessary. Unnecessary, Because if okay. we leave, Japan would So not that it can't solve, it's just unnecessary yeah. at this if point. Okay. Out, Arguing so, a point in a finite so, amount of time requires multiple, knowledge, uh, skill, and finesse. To get it just right, members of the Shawnee Mission East debate team practice, practice, practice. Work sessions like this one are offered nearly every day after school. We just come barging back in, they will be still be angered at our presence, meaning that the relations will still be harmed. Leading the debaters is head coach Trey Witt, a former Shawnee Mission East debater himself. I graduated in 2003. Things have changed tremendously since then. And obviously I grew up with the, the internet, you know, when I was in high school. But I'll even tell them how, you know, back in the day when I was debating, we actually hand um, cut the evidence. And that's a fleet foreign concept to them. It's, they do it all electronically. They copy and paste electronically, type out their arguments electronically. So it, it still is continuing to evolve. Witt says he's always looking for more ways to integrate technology into debate. For example, this season he set up a Google group where the debaters can share files and turn in assignments. But this coach is cautious that sometimes there can be too much of a good thing. One of the problems with technology is it can enable some kids to do less because internet makes it so easy when it's just at the, at the touch of a finger. You can print off an article, you can download a file that's already been compiled by a camp. Whereas I think before we've moved so much electronically, kids really had to be more resourceful, I think. I always tell them the more resourceful you are, the more original research you do, you're obviously going to understand those arguments better. Witt says any student can benefit from what debate has to offer. There's so many critical thinking skills that they get from that really fast debate, being able to analyze and think that fast. But ultimately, I feel like the presentation and public speaking side of debate is something that will carry you through life no matter what you do. There are basically two types of debate, the traditional style and a much faster paced flow style. And the great thing about Kansas is a lot of our debate is more traditional. And the reason that's good is because it makes the activity that much more accessible, like in some states, Everyone's going like Mach 5, talking about like these crazy theoretical philosophical arguments and it's really intimidating for like novices to get in there and do debates and I mean I'm pretty sure we'd like all agree that the most important thing is that the activity benefits as many people as possible. To get a better feel for the structure of a typical debate, I had the team walk me through the speaker's order. The 1AC is the first affirmative constructive. So we have constructive speeches and rebuttals. And so the first four speeches are just constructives, obviously just establishing the arguments and the evidence. And then the rebuttals funnel it down and are usually just analysis, is the debaters just kind of explaining why they're winning arguments, why they should win the debate. The debate structure has the affirmative team begin and end the round. That means the debaters arguing for the negative get to present back to back in the middle. Witt says this can have a big advantage. One of the beliefs is that when you drop an argument, when a speaker drops an argument, you can't bring it back up later. You just lost that argument if you didn't cover everything that the last speaker said. So essentially, a lot of people view that negative block as just one big speech. So that means the one AR has to answer 13 minutes worth of negative arguments. Now that I had a better handle on the debate structure, I was left with just one question. Tell me about the penguins, because oh. I see that that seems to have some sort of relevance to your group. I think five or six years ago, we had a kid who did a um, prose reading about a penguin. And so ever since then, for some reason, it's just kind of been our mascot, and we dress him up in whatever the topic is. Many thanks to the Lancer debaters for clearing up that mystery. I'd also like to thank Coach Witt for an enjoyable and educational afternoon. That's all the time we have for this episode of Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. Join us again as we continue to feature the programs and people of Shawnee Mission who are helping guide students to success. Thank you for watching.